you know, we all we always say we're an overcomer. And that comes from the book of 1 John 5, 4. Tells us that if we believe Jesus, if you're born again, you have overcoming power in this life. And we say that we're more than a conqueror. And that's what, G, uh, that's what the Apostle Paul said when he was in the darkest prison that you can even imagine. He said, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. So we can say the same thing. Whatever the problem is you're facing, you can say, I am more than a conqueror. You can say, I am an overcomer. And you can overcome whatever comes your way. Praise the Lord. And we always say our forecast confession of God's word. And some people want to know, why are we saying a confession? Doesn't confession mean that you have to confess your sins? Yes, it does. But it also means all the words that you say. So why are we confessing the word of God? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. You don't have to turn there. It tells us, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Hebrews 4.14 says, Seeing then that we have a, high, a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, the that Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, confessing God's word. And that is what faith is all about, confessing God's word. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 says, let us hold fast our confession of hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So what are we doing when we confess the word of God? We are training ourselves. And I'm going to talk about that a little more in just a minute. But uh, Romans chapter 1, I wanted you to go there. Romans chapter 1, let me get it myself here. Romans chapter 1 says that we should live by faith. Is faith important? The scripture tells us, God tells us, we should live by faith. Verse 17, Romans 1, 17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. It really isn't a suggestion. And if we are not living by faith, then how are you living? It's poorly, I say. If you're not living by faith in God, then you're not living the high life that he wants you to live. Faith is so important. And so we're talking about that again. And now a lot of people are saying, again? We're talking about faith again? Every Sunday. I mean, every Wednesday, we're talking about faith. You can't exhaust it. Hebrews 11.6 says, actually, everyone should memorize 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. And it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Do you want to please God? Then you need to live by faith. There's no other way to please God. It's impossible. It didn't say, well, it's going to be difficult if you don't live by faith. It is going to be difficult, but it's going to be impossible. Some people want to know, you know, you know they say that you know, the Christian life is, is really hard. No, it's not hard at all. It's impossible. You can't do it at all. 
You can't live as a Christian, a real Christian, unless you're living by faith. And let me say this to you. A couple things before we really get rolling here. Faith is really, really simple. It's so simple. But you know what? We have had over the years, because of religious traditions, sometimes get in the way of us living by faith. Because some people say, well, you don't want to be extreme about faith. I've heard people say that before. You mean, I shouldn't be extreme by pleasing God? I think I want to do that. I want to be extreme with my faith as much as possible. You know, but so uh, faith is really simple. We've had four things that I, I think you should know about faith. And it's simple. But you know what we've had? We've had a lot of people help us misunderstand about faith. Man, you can go on TV and you can go on YouTube and there's a lot of people trying to miss, miss, give you wrong advice about faith. Faith is believing God and His Word. That's the very first thing you have to believe. And I, I know some people, you know, they say, well, I, I believe the Word of God, but... <laughs> you got to get your butt out of the way. Because it's stopping everything. If you always have a butt, see, what we, what we have to do, I'll tell you this, this is a little suggestion for you. Just plain believe what the Word says. Because the Word, it came, it came from God. Just believe God. Regardless, I mean, I know some people, they're, they're new as a Christian and they don't understand everything. I, I understand that. I didn't know everything when I first got born again, but I kept gaining on it because I believed that the Word of God was God speaking. No argument. It's It's tough. In this life, if you still are arguing about the Word of God. I have some people sometimes that argue with me about the Word of God. You just, you're wasting your breath. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to hear you because I, I see right circumstances. They're all over the place and you can look at those if you want to. But the Word of God tells us to look at the Word of God. Praise the Lord. It's so simple. Just don't make it hard. Your words are the thing that release faith. And we're, we're going to get into a lot of scriptures real quickly here in just a minute. But a lot of times we speak some words of faith. We speak some words of expecting something to happen. We speak those words, sometimes we speak them in church. And that's good. That's why I always want you to make a confession of God's word. Speak it. Train yourself. Because when you get out into the world and you get confronted with circumstances and problems, all of a sudden, you let your words twist your, your faith. You let your words that are unbelief, really, you let it quench that fiery prayer that you prayed at church. You can stop those prayers from coming to, to pass by Weak words. Words of unbelief. You know, if you speak words that you hear on TV, on TV it tells you, well, you better take this medicine because there's going to be a trouble 
hitting you and your, every uh, one out of four people are going to have this trouble. So buy this medicine. Don't buy any medicine on TV. And don't agree with the TV that says one out of five are going to have this disease. No, I'm not going to have it. You, you should probably get in a habit of speaking to your TVs. If you're going to watch it, you say, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. No weapon formed to me against me will prosper. Talk back at that TV. Don't let it come into your life. I'm not going to do that. Let me go to Hebrews. Tells us the definition of faith. And some people don't get it yet. Because faith is believing something that you cannot see. Now faith is a substance. See, faith has substance. It's real. Substance of things hoped for. Man, I'm hoping to have miracles in this church. I'm hoping that people get redeemed from sickness and, and disease. I'm believing that people are going to have breakthroughs and come up on top of the problems that we face. We hope for that. And we pray and we believe God and we speak. And the faith is the evidence. See, that's, that's something. It's evidence of the things that you can't see. We're supposed to be looking at the things we can't see. What is it that you can't see? You can't see the healing that, Je that Jesus gave you fr uh, from the whipping post and the cross. You can't see it. But it's real. It's in the spiritual realm. That's where faith is appropriated. That's where you receive from so, for, for something that Jesus already put in the spiritual realm. He put it there and you have to receive it. You have to pray just like Jesus told the disciples to pray. Your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven heaven. See, a lot of people pray that prayer every Sunday, but they don't really know what they're praying because you're praying that the will of God come to your life as it is in heaven, in heavenly places. Praise the Lord. This is a good, a good opportunity for you to say amen. amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Another scripture in Hebrews Chapter, oh, I, I, wrote that, I wrote that wrong. Hebrews verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. How do we understand that? Because in the beginning, in Genesis, it says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. We understand that the worlds were created and framed by the words that came out of God's mouth. Right? So that things which are seen were not made of things that are visible. Wow! Come on, somebody say wow about that. Wow. Say wow, wow backwards. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. I, I've heard people say before that God created the, the worlds out of nothing. Faith is not nothing. Faith is real. God used faith to create the worlds. What does faith do? Faith believes something and says something. That's the way the scripture tells us. Believe something and say something. Believe something and pray something. That's how God works. And we are supposed to be imitators of God. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's turn to Mark chapter 2 for a minute. And this is so, 
so good. Mark chapter 2. Give me a minute to get there. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 starts out, and he's, Jesus is entering per, per, Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. So Jesus was in a house. I don't know whose house. And it says, verse 2, it says, Immediately many gathered together so that there were no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So Jesus was preaching the word of God, and that would bring faith in those that hear it. They came to him and bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed that the paralytic was on, on which the paralytic was, was laying. And when Jesus saw their faith, wait a minute, Jesus saw their faith? How do you see faith? It's a good question, isn't it? He saw their faith. And what we're going to be talking about the rest of tonight is that faith without works is dead. You have to put faith you have to put the word of God into action. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. If you have faith, you say, I've got faith. I read my Bible every day. I've got faith and it's stored up in here. And you know what happens? If you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't use your faith, it's almost like you don't have any at all. So you can go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday and just get hearing, I heard the word of God, I heard the word of God. And when you go out the door tonight, if you don't do something with it, if you don't say something and do something, it's like you don't have any. So these people that were carrying a paralytic man, they brought to Jesus, they were doing something. They heard about Jesus being at this house. And they were bringing this man to be healed because they heard all about Jesus. Jesus does miracles. Jesus is healing all the people. So these men were putting their faith into action. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. I know we've already, we've all read this scripture or had somebody tell us this story. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning. Reasoning is wavering. We, reasoning in your mind, if you're reasoning thing out, well, it just don't seem like faith is going to do me any good. You're reasoning things out. It's going to destroy your faith. Well, I don't know. I, you know, I have some neighbors. And they say, the word of God is just a book. I have some relatives. And they say, the word doesn't work. Well, that's just wavering. That's reasoning. you got to believe the, the word of God regardless of what anybody says. Or what anybody, anybody else believes. You read and, and believe the word of God. So the scribes were saying, wait a minute, you can't forgive sin, sins. And Jesus, immediately, verse 8, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned within themselves and said, to them, why do you, re he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier? Come on, let's all say that. Which is easier? To forgive sins 
or healing a, of a body. Which is easier? So that you can know, this is what it says, Jesus said, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that they were amazed and glorified God. I want to be amazed when I come to church and see somebody out here getting their healing. I want to be amazed. I want to thank, thank the Lord. I'm expecting that happen in our church. Somebody say amen. amen. So it, I'll tell you the answer is it's easier to say your, your sins are forgiven because you can't see the results. You know, if I say, Pam, your sins are forgiven. She doesn't look any different. Of course, she already knows all of her sins are forgiven. But that's easy to say. What's not easy is when you lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And Jesus said, believers will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And that's why I believe that we need to confess the word of God every day of our life. Because you have to, you have to practice. All of a sudden, you're, you're not going to... Uh, here's, here's how I look at it. Anybody been watching the Olympics? Anybody watch a little bit of it? If you look at those people... And how they are running and jumping, swimming, and they're, they're going through all those motions. You know, they had to practice. They didn't just lay on their couch and say, I think I'm going to run the 100 meters tomorrow. You're not going to do that. It's not going to happen. You have to be prepared. You know what these people are? These people that are in the Olympics, let me go back here for a second. When they're in the Olympics, they are people that are masters of the basics. Just the simple bake basics. You know, when they, when they first jumped in the pool and they did a little doggy paddle, you know, like like we, we teach Kyle in her swimming pool. She's not ready for the Olympics. And you're not ready to go out there and raise the dead if you don't practice. If you don't confess the word of God and say, Jesus lives in me. I live in Jesus. And know that you can do what he says you can do. You don't have to turn there, but John chapter 14, verse, 11, verse 12 says that the works, Jesus said, the works I do, you can do also. Well, if, you, if you're not prepared, if you're not meditating on these words of God every day, you're just not going to, you know, if you're just laying on your couch every single day watching TV and somebody comes at your door and they really need a healing, they need a miracle, you're just not going to jump off of your couch and lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You, you have to have that in your heart. And that's where, that where, that's where the the trouble comes. <laughs> Sometimes, see, when we, we need to, bl to believe something, believe the Word of God, we need to say the Word of God, we need to have corresponding actions to what we say we believe, and then we can see ourselves laying hands on the sick and them recovering. Basics. You got to do the basics. 
The basics is read your Bible. And then speak the Bible. This is just the basic things. So when you're watching the Olympics, those people have done this over and over and over again. They are masters. We need to be masters of our confession, our words. And I want you to look at one more thing. And that is 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. I like to say those are the little Johns. We got the Gospel of John and we got the little Johns. 1 John 3 verse 20. Verse 19. Let's start there first. If our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. You see, the, the only thing that can stop your words, your powerful words of faith into people's lives is your unbelief words. You know, I, I know some people that say, I believe in God for my miracle. I believe in God for a breakthrough in this situation. I believe in God for my healing. And then they go home and they get on the phone and they tell all their friends, I'm so sick and so I'm so tired. I don't know what I'm going to do. Wait a minute, what did you say in church? What did you say? Didn't you say that no weapon formed against me will pros prosper? But then your words are contrary what you said you believed in church. And so it nullifies your Unbelief words, none, none of us. And, you know, we could go to uh, the book of Matthew where Jesus was, was uh, commanding a, a little boy who had epilepsy. Yes, and Jesus, the, the disciples, couldn't understand why they couldn't heal the boy. And then so they came to Jesus and said, how come we didn't, we, we know you gave us power to heal the sick and raise the dead and everything else from Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 9 and two, chapter 10, but we couldn't do it. Why? He, they asked him, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Your words are not consistent with what you believe you, you want to believe. So your words are canceling out your faith in action. Praise the Lord. See, the word of God tells us, and you know what, you can you can go through the the gospels and you can read scriptures by uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 52. You don't have to turn there, but Jesus said, go your way, your faith has made you well. He said to uh, the daughter that was uh, sick and, and, and uh, she was, well, in Luke chapter 8, verse 48, it says, Jesus said to her, daughter, be of good cheer, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. That's what Jesus did all the time. Your faith, he said, your faith has made you well. And one more scripture, go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. And this is talking about a man who need, needed a touch in, well, I think there was more than one, but anyway, Jesus said to this man, he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be unto you. So what should we do? We should build up our faith. God has already given. Every born again believer has been given faith. Everyone. So some people say, well, I, I just, things don't happen for me because I just don't have enough faith. But Jesus said, many times, he said, all you need is a mustard seed of faith. Amen. 
And why, why is it that you only need a small amount? Because you have to put it into action. You have to have corresponding actions to your faith. And if you don't have faith in action, it's like you don't even have any faith. It's got to be action. I know I, I, I remember Kenneth Hagin Sr. He was, when he was a teenager, he was in, in bed and he had all kinds of problems, heart trouble and, and just a lot, of, a lot of things. And matter of fact, the, the doctor used to come and tell him, you know, there, there, my boy, it's all going to be over in just a short time. That's what the doctor said to him. But he kept reading his Bible. And he read this one time, he read that you have to have corresponding actions to your faith. And he said to himself, he said, well, what am I doing laying in bed then? I better get out of bed. And so he, he was weak and everything like that, but he said, I am talking about uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 23, speaking to the mountain, speak to my big problem, and I'm going to put action to that saying, God saying, Jesus said, speak to the mountain. Praise the Lord. And doubt not in your heart. That's the key thing there. That's a lot of people speak to the mountain, but they have doubts in their heart. Praise the Lord. In 1 Corinthians, you don't have to turn there, but 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but it should be in the power of God. God's word is his power. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for your word tonight, Lord God, as usual. And Father God, we're asking you to help us in our strength, the strength of our faith and and we're looking to you for helping us get more strength to our faith. In Jesus' name, amen.